H1. Uh, go and watch Bill Wirtz's. Go and watch Bill Wirtz's A History of the Entire World. I guess <laughs> that's that's the lower right. Uh, that's the lower right story. But we are going to take a yardstick called altitudes and apply it to what happened on Earth. So you had this Earth. And you had these homo sapiens. And I like to call them any old baby because the point is we're, we're all different, but we're all rather similar. <laughs> the double helix going on here. Yeah. We've got the infant and uh, Neanderthal, homo sapien, pre-homo sapien. We've got Lucy. We've got uh, hmm. homo, homo habilis, uh, Heidelbergensis. We're very big There's big more every big couple big months. Big. There's more of those cave people being found. Uh, the oh, elusive yeah. missing link it's like oh my god we have a freaking nanofiber mesh at this point and there's still a missing link Ringo, uh, yeah about <laughs> 20 20 others really quickly i thought it was neat. uh someone's like well you know if humans evolve from apes wh where where are all the other ones well we we killed and fucked them today. yeah like, 100 gone. yeah did you read enoch we <laughs> murdered we, they were bad angels we got rid of them <laughs> they were yeah, raping our women because they were more attractive still. Yeah, so we raped their women, and uh, boy, we've got us now. We outsmarted That's them. That's the story of us. Yeah. The velociraptors beat the T-Rexes. It's only us. It's only us. Okay, so um, what's handy about the altitude's uh, sp spectrum is that it's a spectrum. It is the visible light spectrum, visible because these are the patterns that are visible in the world of Homo sapiens um, currently and throughout history. So the spiral dynamics model almost does a rainbow, but there's a couple things that aren't rainbow, Roy G. Biv, on that. And so when Wilbur made altitudes to make it compatible with a lot of concepts that are uh, Roy G. Biv based, including the chakra system, he just said, uh, okay, let's make it the rainbow. Let's adjust those colors. So that's why we're speaking different languages. It seems really intuitive to use the rainbow. Um, I like that. So we start out on, on, on planet Earth, you set human bodies here that have this consciousness and this ability to pattern recognize um, to the point where language becomes a potential, a possibility. So you have planet Earth at infrared. There is a species that's capable of becoming self-aware. Um, and that occurred because of biological evolution, accidents. It just happened over time, you know. Um, <laughs> so you have this uh, planet infrared. So what's the difference between Australopithecus and a dolphin? Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, they ban. They're kind of pack. This is a. Uh, th this is where, in my language, would be saying beige. Um, mm -hmm. And to my understanding, that's like basically all you can do with a hundred percent of your brain power is survive. Stay warm, stay fed, multiply. It's our default operating system. You don't have to train it. This is what a person does when it comes out of a woman <laughs> and uh, enters the world and nobody tells it to do nothing. It's infrared. It's your body uh, impulses, your physical um, uh, instincts. And that's what people did. So you dumped out. There's a little family here. You're going to want to bond to them. You're going to want to... Um, so survive together it's going to be more efficient to survive together but you're not going to form larger groups or settle anywhere because everyone else is a stranger to you that speaks a different language mostly and sees you as a threatening fearful thing for the most part because you're just running from cave to cave searching for food and avoiding anything that might threaten you uh, other people are pretty threatening they have weapons and clothing and fires and so the actual act of like coming up and like doing, you know, trying to dialogue with another person. Yeah. That'd be a slow burn. You know, that would take a while to develop. It's a threat. At first I'd, they I'd would be the shadowy. Be them and they'd have to not be killing me to, to, to break that down, to get that far. So the, the double helix model, we have this uh, cave person and uh, in the upper right, we have an infant. Yeah. That it's, it can only survive. It's it's taking in its environment, processing, but not much is going on other than it hurts to look at the sun. It sucks to be cold. <laughs> it sucks to be hungry. Now, this is a fascinating thing about 
that I like to use the analogy of a Rubik's cube. If you try to solve a Rubik's cube, you'll never solve it in your life. You, you have to know the, the solution. Someone has to show you it or cue you into how algorithms work. But the way to solve a Rubik's cube is to have someone show you how to do it. It's not to figure it out. You won't figure it out. You're not smart enough. <laughs> um, and that's the same thing with infrared. Infrared was on this planet for maybe 200,000 years, maybe 80,000 years. I mean, it's a long time. And you just have these people, they learned fire and they had fire for a super long time. <laughs> they were cooking food and that was the quintessential achievement. Um, so that's infrared is they're the fire guys. They just like, they have fire, like we got fire. Um, and that distinguishes them that, in a way that they are like controlling their environment um, to a certain extent and can be more naked, can have larger brains. Um, <laughs> But so then it's like, okay, well, what happens? Like, why does culture start forming? Because there's really no culture yet and there's no language. And it seems to be the case that what happens is agriculture. So you have um, infrared existing for a really long time and they're never gonna solve the Rubik's Cube. It takes so long. In our scale of time, it's such a ridiculously long scale of time. But what eventually does happen that starts forming culture and language solidly is that people settle into an area and they start planting crops. They figure out this technology that if you gather those seeds and instead of eating them, you put them in the ground and you wait around and you take care of them, you'll have these crops that'll keep feeding you so you don't have to wander around, stay in the same place, it's more secure, you can build up a house for yourself, and then you start seeing social dynamics. Fortify your defenses. So infrared is not quite visible light in terms of the actual existence of society. If you look for infrared, you'll find piles of rocks, you'll find bodies buried in a ceremonial way, but there's not buildings per se. There's not like settlements. So magenta is the first visible color. It's the first society because we're looking at the lower right. So the magenta society, the core pattern, obviously the Indus Valley and the Chinese and the Middle East, they're Africa, they're all forming different peoples, but there's these core patterns that stay the same. So you have these kind of agricultural small villages and basically people take on leadership positions and there starts to create a social hierarchy. Some people are deprived of food. Some people get to make the choice of who gets sacrificed to the gods and the spirits to keep the sun coming up every day. Because um, the way that the world is seen, um, these people have just started talking to each other and they're starting to solidify language together. You know, they're grunts. It's not Adam says like, gah, 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 and you say, gah, 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 gah. but like, we're starting to say like, Buka, you know, like a fucking word that you say every time for the thing. And what that does is that makes the word magical. That word is so powerful. And in Genesis, you have logos, the word. God is communication through symbols in this context, in that time, it, in magenta, the idea of communicating verbally is so freaking powerful that it is God to a certain extent. And so the word for river, the literal symbol river, equals the river itself, which equals the spirit of the river because we haven't cut that all apart yet. It's just um, magical animistic thinking equates the symbol, fuses the symbol with the referent, the object itself. And so the classic example is a voodoo doll. It's not James, it's a representation of James. The magical thinker would say, I put a pin in that, it'll be just like real James had a sword stuck through his head. Because they look the same, they act, it quacks like a duck, right? Um, and so that's the sort of, when you're he higher on the spiral, you look at that and you go, oh, that's how babies think, that's silly. But that's what the mind does when the mind first forms. It starts to create this sacredness to the word and the word to the object and they're fused and I turned blue. I turned blue all of a sudden. I, maybe I turned magenta there. Um, so, but we don't have anything. So my, mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the spiral dynamic side, the purple is, mm -hmm. uh, to, again, to my understanding, pick me apart in the comments. Adam will comment you right back. Uh, so we have beige. We've, we've, we've learned that things are easier if there's two of us. Uh, we don't have to eat as often if we cook the meat. Uh, we've found renewable resource in berries and plants that we can eat. It seems like if we stick around here, those plants come back. 
And so now we have a little tiny bit of free time. We start to process our environment in a way that we want to make more sense of it than the thorns hurt. Well, why does this plant have thorns? It's probably because this deity doesn't want us here. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sense of things, and the easiest way to do it is some magic is happening. Yeah. Oh, the rose god hates me because my hand is bleeding and it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. So the, we're, we're, we're sort of becoming tribal. We're, we're getting some sort of rudimentary society thing going. And we're trying to make sense of things that we can't comprehend sense of. And so the easier way to do it is to just put a deity on it. Put a deity on it. And I like and to... that yeah. is explainable. I like to point out that in the upper right, it's my opinion that pretty much every human being is a genius in the upper right. The brain, there's nothing wrong with that brain unless it's been hit by a rock or something or you fucked your cousin, right? Uh, but the genius brain, which is expressing infrared... Uh, your parents were cousins and they banged. Yeah, and that may happen in infrared because the incest taboo maybe isn't as established and uh, successful. But... Um, the point being that this is a genius person. It's just as smart as the indigo in terms of the functioning of the brain and its capacities. But they only have access to the infrared world. So they're extremely smart about knowing where the mountain lion's hiding and what kind of berries are going to make my tummy hurt. And um, the alertness to the present moment and the responsiveness to threats. And it's all, it's intelligent. And likewise, magenta isn't stupid or purple isn't stupid. It's seeing a very well-rendered world that from higher stages looks incorrect because we have greater understanding and comprehension that's ordered by the other quadrants the magenta basically the human psyche will interpret the world as magenta as it starts to form a culture and it's just a natural thing so the intelligence is then applied to magic it's applied to comprehending the the connotations of a word or a concept to a physically real referent or a psychologically real referent and it's just the natural thing that the brain will do and that the society will orient itself to these magical uh, realities and so they'll tend to the magenta mindset is very parent oriented because as in ourselves we were magenta as little children that were dependent on our parents who were like gods and they modeled how to be and what reality is for us so if your parents are fucked up, your whole magenta foundation is fucked up. Um, but that, as you, if you live in a magenta society, because we're still talking about horticultural, agricultural, small villages, when you're living in that system, uh, it's going to express the parent relationship in terms of reality itself. So the world has a spirit, the whole world has a spirit, and that's our parent. And so that parent, like you said, when I have pain in my life, it's because the, the world spirit's mad at me. So I need to give it something. What I give it has to take something away from me. It has to be a sacrifice because that's the only thing I can give. So I'll cut my finger off on an altar or I'll kill my dog on an altar to say, here world, I'm, I beg you to protect us. That's our relationship with reality at, at <laughs> Magenta. P very child parent relationship. It's begging reality, it's, it's not demanding, but it's reality is the giver and purple must accept what reality gives it. So the only control you really have is to beg and plead and whine. <laughs> yeah, forfeit what you have. Because those magical practices don't really work. But we don't have the, the tools that we do today. We don't have the ability to rely on someone else's thought processes to figure out that, oh, well, the sun doesn't go away, returned, and the sun is, uh, it makes light. Yeah, that's good. But it, the photons creating, hitting a leaf of a plant and making a borophyll um, <laughs> is what's making this plant grow. It's, there's, no one can figure out the Rubik's Cube, but somebody did. So, in purple, no one can figure out why these plants grow. They just do. And so to make sense of that and put it away, to compartmentalize so that we can get on with our lives, it's a deity or, you know, the creator or the father or the, the, the great spirit. 
Yeah, like you don't have to explain magenta to magenta. Like you just go up to a kid and just be like, you know, this is a tree. And they're oh, a tree. Okay, like wow. You know, they they will act magenta automatically. So you don't have to like explain how magic works to magic because it's a default. It's like the first thing a mind will do when it starts to order reality is it will be magical. It's very counterintuitive us to us um, because we tend to think that you like start at rational. You know that like. Or reality starts getting I mean, ordered. You, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thought experiment, and you'll enjoy it, and the kids will enjoy it, too. Ask them where that tree came from. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, you know, just what do you think? There's, you know, no judgment here. You wouldn't say it that way. But if you coax out of a kid how some sort of thing was created or came about, you'll end up with a very fantastic You'll hear story a magical narrative. Science. Yeah. yeah. Be- because the brain forces it into logic into reason it's like uh because that's what cars do you know they always say because that's the magical (laughs) well because like (laughs) well guess what like you have to put something after that (laughs) that explains okay then um what happens i think is that the that the there are these small whole horticultural villages that are kind of bumping up against one another they're they're becoming prevalent and the time scale here is like tens yeah, of thousands. Uh, there's like ter- territorial issues. These, yeah. these tribes are getting big enough that, hey, that's, that's, that's my raspberry patch. Like, mm, well, that's my raspberry patch. And the magical systems that they are solidifying into oral tradition are coming into conflict with one another. Either the people across the hill are taking your stories and modifying them. It's your source of conflict. Or they're completely rejecting your stories and saying, oh, no, our stories. So you're starting to see these conflicts and these bumping up against each other as, as magenta comes to fruition. So the infrared timescale is kind of like hundreds of thousands of years. The magenta timescale is like tens of thousands of years. It doesn't really, you can draw these lines in a lot of places where it emerges, where it's solid, you know, et cetera. But you start finding that the winners as you zoom out to like the the scale of like a small kingdom when you're looking at all these little magical um villages the winners are going to be the ones that start taking over the other ones <laughs> and, and and aggressively saying you will adopt our ideas or even just literally kidnapping them and murdering half of them and integrating the other half which is you know kind of the i think of the central american um cultures that, that were indigenous when we came here because it's a really good example of like egyptian society occurring in like way a time scale that's like not even at even close so like you have these um amber meme green meme or uh, amber meme orange meme boats coming over and running into a straight up red meme empire that's fully operational that's never seen orange meme or anything like it before and there's like all these you know I think it's a myth, but that, you know, that they couldn't even see the boats because it was so outside of their like scale of perception or, (laughs) um, I don't know if I believe that, but certainly it was like aliens. It sounds like folklore. Yeah. Folklore bleeding it. Yeah. But I mean, it was certainly like alien visitation when those boats came and they're just like, Hey, like, look at this. We like could see, you know, the, the (laughs) astronomy with these little devices we have. Like it was, it was definitely like getting abducted by aliens so uh, the the social structure becomes a lot more hierarchical at red and the magical animus Which is next I, I, yeah. I, you you touched on a couple memes because you jumped uh 30, years into the future talking about sextants uh red is next in spiral dynamics which is what i know more than than uh, about than altitude. So next we're we're moving up, uh, and then I I, don't, I didn't want to cut you off, but just to put that clear definition, we've gone from uh, on the spiral side beige to purple. Now we're inching into red, and then on the altitude side, uh, yeah, infrared, magenta, red in altitudes. Same thing though. Um, red starts to develop myth as opposed to magic. So. Myth is a sort of consciously wrong distillation of magic into a system that's more adaptable to uh, basically colonization in a way, to um, annexing, to building empires and integrating like large, large groups of people 
what happens is you tend to develop a sort of hero figure. Like you have to choose a person that represents your values and that person becomes the living God on earth. And whatever that person says structures all of reality for all of the people. <laughs> um, so red meme in the world today, uh, not to throw shade, but there's, you know, North Korea is a, a nation that is run by a God king on earth that is taking over the world by force because he's the God King on earth. That's a red meme um, situation, which is complicated by all the existence of all the other memes. Um, but yeah, like Genghis Khan, the point is we are going to take over the world. And Genghis Khan is the God on earth. Who's going to make that happen. Be more like him, obey him. And, that orders your society into a much, much more hierarchical um, system. Uh, slavery becomes widespread. The sacrificing becomes systematized and becomes um, war becomes really structured. And it becomes like a lifestyle, you know, like people are born for war, like a significant um, fraction of the population. Their role is a warrior role. Um, in India, the caste system, you know, the what is it, the Maitreya? Uh, the, you have these warrior classes and your whole point is to be the best murderer uh, for your entire life until you yourself are murdered. <laughs> that's your goal. Which is a success. That's success. Just taking over the world, that's the point. To get the God King to take over the world. That's red, red meme. I think the, uh, the Greeks and the Romans fucking nailed it. <laughs> they, they took red meme Viral and, and ran with it. This is a society based on you've got that purple in there, you've got those gods, and mm -hmm. you've got um, these these greater beliefs. But then they sis, um, they they make it a the lore and the myth side that it's not just the god of lightning. He has a name. He has a wife. Mm -hmm. He has kids. Like it's, it's and yes, become something larger than itself what's what's um, really fascinating yeah, here is that the gods go from being nature to people the red meme gods are people and they tend to be real people maybe myth uh legendary figures who didn't actually exist or were actually someone else or whatever i mean it's probably lied about it's probably contorted but like ajnu was the name of the town was also the first king was also is now the god in the stars so what, I don't know who Ajahn is, but this is an example of, you know, the red meme uh, power god that is, you know, every aspect of society is underneath that, that logos, that word, that name. And, and that is literally, as you read past Genesis, the old, the story of the patriarchs is the red meme story of that particular red meme regime taking over the Middle East. And that is their body of mythology um, the earlier Old Testament work, stuff is, is the red meme story of, of life on earth from the Western Christian, Judeo-Christian Judeo perspective. Um, so patriarchy, uh, in this case, a male ruler, prophetic God on earth. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's not unfortunate because it, it kind of has to happen, but also uh, in red meme, it's not... Uh, speak softly and carry a big stick it's scream and have a big stick like the mm -hmm. bigger the stronger the faster they are the rulers it's sort of a, uh, I don't know what sort of system you could put it in but yeah the, the, the patriarchy happens because in general uh, men are stronger and so in the, in the time men lead because women again just examples here, folks. But when you have that baby in your belly, I'm going to stab you. It's that simple. <laughs> That's not yeah, fair. So the men being more aggressive and, and physically more strong. And not and having to have babies, yeah. That. And, and then not having to have babies. So, I mean, even today, there's a patriarchy because that's how far back this kind of bullshit runs. <laughs> that's just the fact that there's a patriarchy is red meat. So we always talk, we, I mean, because the fascist regime, the, the Nazis, the, the Ku Klux Klan, it's all red meme. So we hate red meme, right? And it's aggressive. But um, to honor the dignity of red meme, this is where people realize the power of a human being. So the gods are humans now. And human, humanity is a god. 
it's we it, it's the the first dignity is of man and it's the first arising of an ego like a really like a worship of the ego like a respect for the ego and um instead of people being these like meek servants of the gods you for, you start having these people who are worshiped as heroes you know your moses and noah type of people um what that says about humanity is actually really important that that we worship the human spirit and the human will now that's cool it's just taken to an absolute level because in order to be a power god hero you have to murder people very meanly <laughs> and uh to assure victory you're going to do the art of war thing sort of uh, double, double helix uh, model, this is where society is at. This is when children, I mean, throughout life, this is where they start to say no. Yes. <laughs> you, you, need to, uh, you need to go to bed. No. And what a beautiful thing. That's when you're becoming a person with your own deal. Yeah. And they'll say no for stupid reasons. No. You'll be like, um, it's morning. They'll be like, no, it isn't. It's nighttime. <laughs> It's yeah, just yeah. personal power. <laughs> and if they get really good at that, you know, that, that will, you need that your whole life, the ability to be powerful. You're going to need that the whole way up the spiral. And in my case, uh, with this hatred of like aggression, this green meme kind of like anti red, uh, you know, red becomes repressed, but you have to bring it back in into your healthy spiral. Like you have to be to a certain extent selfish egocentric and you have to express power over others if you want to get work done in this world i mean it's just your your happiness in general depends on you being able to stand up for yourself and say no and we hope that that comes to an extent you know and it's embraced by the higher by the higher stages so it's a it becomes more of a personal confidence and a and a personal strength and equanimity rather than dominating for the sake of dominating to prove to someone that you have more power over them. It's more just like, okay, well, I'm just doing my thing and I'm, I'm winning this game at Orange, let's say, and it's not a slight to you, you know, or it's not a slight to me if you're winning the game against me. It's just a game. That's how Orange handles that problem. Your advantage is my disadvantage. <laughs> And that's, yeah, green meme is, 